As much as I make fun of the nerds who brag about being able to tell us where in the coronary arteries an obstruction is based on the 12 lead EKG, it's not like the friggin' cardiologist is going to find it in the cath lab, but thanks for the helpful tip. It is critically important to be able to identify an inferior wall MI and understand the physiology behind it. The inferior wall of the left ventricle is fed by the right coronary artery in the vast majority of people. However, in about 10% of people, the circumflex branches off into the posterior descending artery, and that feeds the inferior wall. Despite what your instructor tells you, don't get too wrapped up in that kind of nerd shit, and I can hear gasps from the crowd, but just being honest. Here's how you identify an inferior wall MI, and this will be on every test you ever take. Medic school final, your national registry, FPC, etc., etc. Commit the leads 2, 3, and AVF to memory. When I was in school, the way I remembered it is that if you get second or third place in a race, that's inferior performance. So leads 2 and 3 are inferior. AVF is easy because there's an emphasis on the letter F in the word inferior. If the patient is having an inferior STEMI, they're going to have at least one millimeter of ST elevation in two or all of the inferior leads. See here, two, three, and AVF. Why does everyone make such a big deal about inferior wall MIs? Well, it's because these patients can crash on you. If the inferior wall is affected, whatever, that sucks for the patient, but it's really not a big deal. The survivability is actually really high. However, sitting next to the inferior wall is the right ventricle. And if the infarct size extends into the right ventricle, that is when the inferior wall MI becomes a big friggin' deal. And this happens in about 40 to 50% of inferior wall MIs. The right ventricle is a giant pussy. It's not strong, and anytime it's insulted or accosted, it's going to crap out and stop working. If the RV isn't pumping effectively, then it's not putting out a whole lot of blood into the pulmonary circuit, and thus... Not much blood is going to be coming back to the left side of the heart. So instead of a nice, thick, heavy, meaty load of blood getting shot out by the left ventricle to perfuse the body, the left ventricle is just shooting out wimpy little poots, leaving the body woefully underperfused, and your patient's going to have a shit blood pressure, and they're going to look like death. These patients need preload, so they require a fluid bolus to help the heart fire off a nice load, instead of the sad, wimpy little shot of blood that it's shooting out. And this is why nitroglycerin must be given with extreme caution to these patients. And some programs say it's completely contraindicated. If the patient is already lacking preload because the RV isn't pumping, and then you vasodilate them with nitro, then you're reducing their preload even more. And this may cause catastrophic hypotension. So how the hell are you supposed to know if the inferior wall MI involves the right ventricle or not? Well, you can do a right-sided 12 lead, but fuck that, that's too much work. Just do V4R. Simply take lead V4, move it to the same spot, but on the right side of the patient's chest, shoot the 12 lead EKG, and when it prints out, write a little R next to V4. If there is ST elevation in V4R, then boom, the right ventricle's involved. To summate, ST elevation in 2-3 AVF, inferior wall MI. RV may be involved, do V4R to confirm. If the RV is involved, big risk for hypotension and crashing if you give nitroglycerin and the patients will need some fluid.